So for those of you who follow the Linus Tech Tips Twitter and Instagram, um, <laughs> you'll already be aware that there was recently a crisis at our headquarters. Uh, sorry, <clears throat> sorry, it's still a little difficult for me to talk about this, but I became aware after returning from a brief absence that someone had been at my desk touching my things. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. So, naturally, at that point, there were two avenues available to me. The first would be calm, measured discourse with my trusted employees about the importance of respecting one's personal space and possessions. While the second would be to over-engineer some manner of mechanical deterrent that would give any interlopers a much needed taste of justice. So in the end, I decided, well, let's just say this isn't a video detailing how to host a discussion about office protocol. MassDrop is currently featuring their exclusive K7XX red headphones built by AKG. Learn more and buy one today at the link in the video description. Meet the Enforcer. Out of the box, the Elite Strike Rhino Fire is a fully automatic, fixed point, anti-personnel nerf gun with a 2.8 dart per second rate of fire, an arc range of up to 81 feet, and a 50 dart ammunition drum capacity. It's a beast in its own right, but it only works when I'm around to operate it, which means I needed to turn this hefty foam blaster into a fully automated, motion-detecting, stationary sentry turret. So to accomplish this, we'll need the following. Three servos, an Arduino, a webcam, and a laptop to coordinate it all. Not to mention some quick rewiring and just a touch of fine woodworking. Now, in much the same way that you can't make an omelet without breaking a couple of eggs, you can't modify a Nerf gun without first voiding the crap out of the warranty. So step one then is to carefully, mind you, these things are over a hundred bucks, disassemble the Rhino Fire. Our main objective here is to access the internal wiring, but the lighter our gun is, the easier it will be for our servos to turn it, and the aptly named Rhino has a little more junk in the trunk than we'd like out of the box, which means we'll want to remove our bulky trigger assembly, not to mention the six D-cell batteries that also have got to go. Once the gun is in pieces, this is also a great time to give it a quick makeover. Doing it upright involves laboriously sanding off all the logos, then taping and painting in layers, etc, etc, etc. But that's literally as interesting as watching paint dry, so we're going to skip over that with some video magic. Ah, much better. So as you can see, we've removed some excess weight at the back, pulled out the battery pack, and isolated the internal switch that turns on the motor. Next, we need to assemble the body of the turret that this will sit on. This bottom box is where we install the webcam and laptop, so it needs to be nice and roomy. Our first servo goes inside the top of the box and the gun bracket is mounted on top, which allows rotation along the x-axis. We want to keep the load on the servos as light as possible, especially when at rest, which means keeping the weight off of the moving components themselves. Now our first plan was to simply place this ring of ball bearings between the box and the gun bracket. But during the prototyping stage, we found that to be insufficient. The wood was just too rough and the bearings were too small for this to be an effective solution. So the way we solved that then was to layer the ring of ball bearings between some discarded CDs. Thanks AOL! That we attached to the wood. The CDs are the perfect size, though some minor modification was necessary to make room for the servo, and they're smooth enough that the bearings were able to roll properly, greatly reducing the strain on our servos. Now that we had turn, we needed tilt. Good news though, 
the Rhino comes with a tripod mount already that is located close to center mass. So we gently modified this to allow a dowel to be inserted. The dowel fits into two ball bearings that are housed in wood panels on either side, allowing for ease of movement. Since the gun isn't perfectly balanced, we added some small weights until it required very little effort to tilt it up and down. Now our servo installed at the end of the dowel can tilt the gun more quickly, drastically improving the ability of our sentry to track its target. So with the wood frame built, we next mounted the remaining servos, the Arduino, and our battery packs. Now while our initial plan was to wire the internal motor of the Rhino directly to the Arduino, in the end we decided to go with a third servo and a 3D printed prong controlling a mechanical switch. Then, with all of that in place, we just needed to neatly wire it all together, then hook it up to the laptop and webcam in the base, and run the software that we downloaded from projectsentrygun.rudolphlabs.com, a super awesome open source sentry project that you should totally check out, by the way. Now I'll take a moment to give you guys a quick pro tip. When you set out to do a wiring job like this, no matter how small the project is, or how simple you initially assume it will be, pick up at least two different colors of wire. Red and black for positive and negative are pretty standard. Don't just get one color because you're confident that you can keep everything straight and you think green is pretty. You will end up four hours deep into the project surrounded by hastily marked wires from five different motors and two different batteries in a hopeless tangle, deeply confused and full of regret. So, so much regret. All right, let's get back on topic. Before our final test, we've got one more housekeeping item. Our final job looks a little messy, so uh, hey, can we get some of that video magic going on here? I guess we're just gonna have to embrace the whole junkyard chic aesthetic thing. Testing time! Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Success! I can now feel comfortable leaving the office knowing that my tools, pens, and prawns will rest unmolested. Of course, for the majority of the time when I'm here, I don't actually want this thing hovering behind me, so I needed to find a way for it to pull double duty. Fortunately, with the help of a little open source facial recognition software, it can be easily repurposed as an employee morale booster. Now that's what I call a motivational tool. Satisfaction 100% guaranteed. Nuts, nuts. We're 100% sure you'll love it. It's well packaged, I'll give it that. So nuts.com is a family owned and operated company that has been restocking healthy pantries for what was it? Since 1929, they have more than 3,000 products, not all of which are nuts. So we got some cashews, chocolate covered pretzels. Can you believe the brand expected me to make it all the way through this without making any jokes about eating nuts? So in a nutshell, nuts.com has lots of hard to find items, including gluten-free and organic ones. They have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. And if you check out the link in the description, you can get four free gifts in a curated mini shop with your first purchase of $25 or more. So go check them out over at nuts.com. Thanks for watching guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do, but if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, or check out the link to where to buy the stuff we featured at Amazon in the video description. Also linked in the description is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one and our community forum, which you should totally join. Now that you're done doing all that stuff, you're probably wondering what to watch next. So click that little button in the top right corner to check out the latest video over on channel Super Fun.